Hello there, welcome to the June 2018 Applied Paper. Here we're looking at question 4. Helen is studying the daily mean wind speed in Camborne using the large data set from 1987. The data from one month is summarised below in table 1. A is calculate the mean of the data and B is the standard deviation of the data. Now what we have here is 13 results that don't have any wind speed for them. So in other words, the measuring instrument was faulty or just no results were co recorded um, for 13 of these days. So we just ignore these 13 days for working out the mean and we'll just work out the mean for this set of 18 days here. So what we'll do then is we'll add up all our data values together and divide by the um, divide by the amount of days that we've added together. So 6 plus 6, add 7 plus 7 plus 7, add 8 plus 8, add 9 plus 9, add 11 plus 11 plus 11, add 12 plus 13 plus 13 plus 14 plus 16 plus 16, divide by how many days we've got, which is 18, and then we'll get our answer. Alternatively, you could use your calculator to answer this for you. So if you go into mode 6 of your calculator and go to the one variable mode, so hit option number 1, now, what we have here is we have some frequency data. So to turn the frequency column on, you press Shift and then Menu for the setup. Scroll down once and you'll get Statistics appear. Press option number three to select that option for Statistics and then hit one to turn the frequency column on. Now we've got the frequency column on. We'll insert our data into the table and then we'll press Option and then once we're at option, we'll select option number three, which is one variable calculations. And when we've selected the one variable calculations, we get the mean on the top, which says that x bar equals 10.22 recurring. And moving on to part B, calculate the standard deviation. Well, the standard deviation will be the one second from bottom, uh, 3.17. But maybe we might want to just show some workings out because it is worth two marks after all. Now, just a reminder, the standard deviation formula is the sum of x squared over n minus x minus the mean squared. So let's just type in those values. Now we've got the sum of x squared, that's uh, the third row down, that's 2062, divided by 18 minus 10.2 recurring squared, and then that must equal the mean, which is 3.17. So there we are, we've used our calculator, uh, this is all going to be, what's the, what's the unit on this? Well it's wind speed, and I know just from some knowledge of the data set, wind speed is measured in knots. So both of these should have units of knots on them. So we've used the calculator to show some working and also to write down our final answer. So there we are, three marks for both of those parts there, courtesy of our nice calculator. Moving on to part C. The means and standard deviations of the daily mean wind speed for the other months from the large data set uh, for Camborne in 1987 are given in table 2 below. The data, are, the data is not in month order. So we have month A, month B, month C, month D and month E. Using your knowledge of the large data set suggests giving a reason which month had a mean of 11.57. So that's effectively which month was the windiest month. Now just for some knowledge of the large data set, just from this screen here, I know that the data set goes from May to October and Camborne is in Cornwall in Britain. So now that we know this fact, we've got to think, okay, which month in Cornwall was probably the most windiest from May to October? And I'm going to think there it's probably October because in the Northern Hemisphere, the summer months are from May to August, maybe a little bit into September. But the autumn months, when it is windy, is in October. So it's probably going to be October. So giving it's probably going to be October. And given that this is a two mark question, it probably wants a reason from this because... Um, May to September are 
it is is generally summer um, whereas October is in autumn it's in autumn and hence more windy so there we are that's the answer for part C moving on to part D now the data for these months are summarized in the box plots on the opposite page where I've just I just put it down here they are not in month order or the same order as in table 2 Part D, part I, st states the meaning of the star symbol on some of these box plots. These are outliers. So they wouldn't fit in the standard range, but they're, they're just so far away from the mean, and they're only one singular value that we don't include them in the, in the, main, um, in the main whisker. Part 2 is suggest giving a reason which of your months from table 2 um, is most likely to be summarized by the box plot Y. Now Y is this box plot here and it's very similar to this box plot here. Now they probably have a quite a small mean um, so A and B have quite a small mean here but um, Y has quite a well, Y will probably have a larger standard deviation than this box plot here um, on A. So I'd say A is probably lining up with this one here because it's got the lowest mean and the lowest standard deviation because the box is quite um, is, is more thinner than any other box plots. So I'd probably say therefore that Y would match up with B because that's got the next lowest mean but it's also got a slight bigger a standard deviation in it as well so on both of those variables it does make sense that y will match up with b so it's going to be b and i'll probably put a reason for it as well because it has a low mean and a larger um, standard deviation than A. So there we are, so Y is probably aligned with A. And there we are, that's the answer for question four, worth eight marks in total there. Let's now move on to question five. <laughs> 